everyone talking about the top five best fragrance houses for my taste at least i've tried so many at this point that these are five where if i see that they're putting out something new i want to try it no questions asked at least a sample not a blind buy um but let's just jump in these are in not in any particular order and all of these have plenty of unisex scents and a lot of different kinds of scents um maybe except for the last one is a little bit more kind of in the same area but yeah let's just jump in first louis vuitton i love the combination of really high quality that they have but very very kind of i don't want to say simple but just like mass appealing scent profiles so they have kind of what's i would consider like a niche level quality of it but they don't smell like an acquired taste they don't smell you know they're not trying to go for anything that some of the kind of more out there niche ones go for or more experimental or anything like that. They're just pure good quality and smell fantastic. Uh, yeah, even the ones that I don't like, typically I can still just like, okay, wow, that smells so good quality. It's just not my taste with the notes or something. And I also think they don't get enough credit. <laughs> I'm out here standing for Louis Vuitton like they need that. Um, for the uniqueness of a lot of their scents because they have quite a few where I have never smelled anything exactly like that. It's not unique in an avant-garde type of way, but it is unique in that there's just not something out there that smells exactly like that. My personal favorites, I have a top five video, uh, so I will link that in the description for there, but my favorites that are full bottle worthy to me by Louis Vuitton are On the Beach, Unisex, and Sur La Rue, which leans masculine. And yeah, I just love everything about them, the quality, the scents, yeah, and uh, they have some of the best bottles and atomizers. They're just so smooth, the magnetic cap, just classy, just simple. Let me grab one of my bottles. Oh, so good. I also, people has sometimes say mixed things about, oh, longevity protection for Louis Vuitton. The two that I wear, Sierra La Root and On the Beach, have, on my skin at least, major, major projection and longevity. Yeah, so really nice, just like, heavy cap that just clicks into place, got the logo on there, just classy, simple, nice size, like nice ergonomic sort of grip, which people don't usually talk about that, but it is really annoying when you're trying to spray something and it's like not at an, you know, everything's positioned or shaped in a way that's not kind of easy to just quickly grab and spray. But yeah, love Louis Vuitton. And Jacques Cavalier, I believe, does a lot of their perfume, so they also have a lot of consistency there, too. It's not just, like, random different perfumer here every single time and has done a lot of heavy hitters, even, you know, from 90s and all the way up till now. So, yeah, next up, Zoologist. Three full bottle were these from Zoologist for me. Cow, Cockatiel, and Tyrannosaurus Rex. They're all, or I guess... Cow and Cockatiel are a little bit more in the same ballpark, but Zoologist Tyrannosaurus Rex is very different from the others, and I love everything about this fragrance house. One founded by Victor Wong, such a nice person who's just like, you know, writes handwritten notes and stuff, even as Zoologist has gotten bigger and bigger, and really like responds to people and is so respectful of everybody, and yeah, just seems to put so much care and thought into it. To the animal theme, it's so fun that it's not just like, oh, they pick an animal for each one, and call it that it's like they're actually trying to go after not necessarily just the smell of that animal but its habitat and other stuff like that but in a way that's at least somewhat wearable and some of them are very very wearable so that's always so fascinating to smell and get that evocative image of the animal in question uh for example with cow people were not thrilled with that one but i love it and the reason they weren't thrilled for a lot of people at least they thought it smelled too kind of not animalic enough or not wild enough or anything but I love the kind of pastoral milky feel to it. And to me, it does evoke that. Whereas you've got something like Tyrannosaurus Rex, absolutely apocalyptic, smells like burning trash on fire. Mm, but it's something I just love about it. And as with Louis Vuitton, very high quality bottles, great you know, grips and ergonomic, great atomizer, really nice sturdy caps. So that's on point as well. And yeah, they're just a joy to always see that, you know, what's the latest animal they're coming out with and check that out. And people love to kind of debate the different aspects of different scents of theirs. And they do so many different kinds of scents. Like, obviously, okay, each one's an animal, but the fact that they can do them on so many different ends of the spectrum and you're always gonna get something interesting and high quality, so fun. Three, Comme des Gassants. The self-titled Comme des Gassants from 2011, because there's another one from the 90s or something that's also self-titled and black the eau de toilette 
another one that needs clarification because there's also black from the play series and black pepper but this is black eau de toilette fun bottle very quirky and that's something that i love about comme de Gassant. they do really avant-garde interesting fun stuff but it's often so wearable at the same time so you get the fun of the uniqueness of it and like whoa that's so weird but not so far to the point where you can't still wear them some of them are pretty far out but a lot of them aren't and they're so reasonably priced like they're often like you know 100 110 for a bottle which if you're used to just buying cheapies i know that sounds more expensive but for the quality and for the avant-garde factor uh yeah that's a really good deal compared if these were by someone that was considered more niche even though they their fragrance house pretty much might as well count as niche um those would be way more money so i love how many different weird types of things they do they experiment with different notes this one has industrial glue and packing tape notes yeah so good and they managed to just do these really original fun creations i don't love every single scent they ever put out but i've tried about 70 now and almost always i at least kind of like them or think that they're interesting and totally worth sampling either way the one knock that i'm going to give to them is uh, the caps are so bad at least for these two that I tried, they just feel so cheap, like really kind of clunky to get on and off. I know that sounds like a petty or babyish complaint, but one, like for ergonomic reasons, for example, with I have like carpal tunnel and tendonitis and stuff and some stuff really hurts my arms and hands. It's actually really kind of sucks to have to like pull so hard to take it off. And just, yeah, I, like I'd rather pay a couple more dollars for the fragrance and have something that didn't feel so cheap, especially because the fragrance itself doesn't seem cheap, but I'll forgive them. <laughs> For that because overall they're just so fun and just fantastic next up everything by Prin Lomros the perfumer I'm basically counting all his as one because they're the main ones he has are parfum persona and the Prin line there's also strangers parfumery I guess that counts as just as much of a main one but I'm especially talking about Prin and persona a full bottle were these from that from Prin Veruac which means wolf and this the whole thing is is based on almost like a wild feral wolf and it smells like it's really animalic and smoky and intense and i'm and it has oud in it normally i don't like animalic or oud notes very much but something about this just grabs me i love it and i feel so like badass when i wear it too my full bottle worthy from under the uh, parfum persona line is tom yum yes like the soup and that's indeed what it's supposed to smell like I love it. To me, it doesn't smell like food, though. I don't think unless you like literally were comparing it to a bowl of Tom Yum in front of you that you would be like, oh, you smell like soup if someone was wearing it. It just smells to me like a nice, fresh, spicy eau de cologne style, like the traditional sort of citrus with some aromatics. And these are so different from each other, but both such fun concepts. And I love it. Nothing crazy special about the bottles, but I do like that they come in the 30 mils because I don't use a lot at once. So... I really don't technically need 100 mil. That's going to last me so many years for most fragrances that I like the option to save a little money. Still spending a lot with these because they're how expensive they are, but you get a smaller size. And technically, those are the only two so far by Prin Lomos that are full bottle worthy for me, but I love almost every one that I end up trying by his. It's just I'm so, I don't want to just own so many that are too similar or something or that don't quite you know meet certain criteria for me, but really consistently fantastic so creative such high quality ingredients just yes um i would literally be like can i have your autograph <laughs> if i met Prin lamros at a perfume conference or some shit like that yeah just it, fantastic uh and lastly pine word now i don't have a bottle of anything by them but i love everything they do pretty much so consistently and the quality is just unparalleled that I still include them in my top five. I'm hoping one of them will be full bottle worthy for me at some point, but it's not for lack of quality or loving it that they're not. There just hasn't quite been the one for me yet from them, but basically they're mostly like coniferous sort of deep foresty tree type scents. They do have a little more variety than that. And even within that, so many different kinds, like some are earthier, some are kind of fresher, just there's a lot going on, but I just cannot believe how high quality every single one of their scents that I try ends up being. It's always just like, okay. And they still have their own unique vibe, even though there's dozens and they're all kind of similar themes to some degree. They all smell, you know, different. 
and just like whoa like the i can't think of yeah i think almost more than any other fragrance house including on this list is if you're going to smell a pine wood fragrance you're going to get such high quality you just like such well, I don't want to just say natural ingredients because stuff doesn't need to be natural to smell good. And like Prin Lamarose always smells good, high quality natural ingredient, but something about the pine wood ones are just like really breathtakingly high quality to me. And that's the one where I would say it's not as much. The other ones all have so many different kinds of scents, all the fragrance houses on this list. Pine wood is really going to be more for people who are into like foresty or earthy type of scents, which often tend to be more masculine leaning. But fantastic for those that are the type of thing where I just think it's worth it to check out just for the quality and like wow the vividness of feeling that foresty vibe even if you don't think you're gonna like them but yeah these are my top five there's so many great fragrance houses out there especially like in niche and indie and stuff but these ones are all ones where if I yeah if I see they come out with a new fragrance that's I need to sample that like immediately the second there's a sample available for sale so uh, respect for all of these and if you if you're a hater of any of these I guess let me know or if you whatever your favorite uh, fragrance houses are I'm always looking to uh, check new stuff out if I haven't 